Welcome to Radical Self-Respect with Jared Mello. This is the place where I help people learn how to not take any BS, how to avoid being manipulated, and of course, how to practice radical self-respect. Most people find this channel because of a relationship with a borderline or a narcissistic individual, and this video is going to dive deeper into that subject. And I must say, the most common question I get from guys is, how do you handle a BPD woman or a BPD relationship, in particular from a red pill lens? That's the most common question I get, or a variation of that question. And the quick and simple answer is, you really shouldn't. That's the quick and simple answer, but what fun is that? So I'm going to dive into my qualifications here. Now I'm someone who's had BPD traits, uh, dark empath traits, so I'm not talking from a place of ignorance here when it comes to this kind of thing. And my rules of thumb are this. There has to be at least three things that have happened for me to even tell someone to consider being with a woman who has BPD. Number one, they must admit they have an issue and then take responsibility and ownership of that issue. Now, a lot of them can do step one, but then they don't follow up with the second part of that. And then once they take ownership and responsibility, that means what? It means going to DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. And then three, having a track record of not acting out on their disorder, not being a victim of their disorder, but proving they are able to respond instead of react, respond instead of splitting, respond instead of devaluing and discarding, respond instead of any sort of abusive behaviors. Those are my rules of thumb. Now granted, it is pretty rare for people to accomplish all of that, which is why I resort back to my first answer, you probably shouldn't, unless they've done all of those things. And it's pretty rare for them to have done all of those things. And I upset a lot of people when I talk like this, but to me, I'm trying to protect people. Part of practicing radical self-respect is understanding we don't need to tolerate abuse. There is no reason for that. But here's what also happens. I'll make comments like this on other videos where I tell people, yeah, it's the BPD person's responsibility to take ownership of their issue, not be a victim about it, and do their best not to act out on it. And I get comments like this in return that don't make much sense to me. And I think they can actually do more harm than good. And this is an example of one of the comments I get. So I'll say that exact thing about having a BPD person take responsibility of their issue and do better and not be a victim of their disorder. And someone commented this. This response lacks understanding and tolerance. I know firsthand the pain of being in a relationship with someone who has BPD, but that person is in a constant daily struggle and often doesn't know what to do given the multiplicity of comorbid symptoms, trauma responses, and other diagnoses that also clouds their thinking with irrational instability. Now, to pause it, what is all that? That sounds a lot like deering to me. Defending, explaining, excusing, and rationalizing. That is something that, in the book No More Mr. Nice Guy, the author talks a lot about that concept, and it sounds like someone that probably struggles with a little codependency as well, coming up with all of those excuses for them. I don't really think that's helpful. But continuing, my main point, many with BPD are also comorbid with NPD, which acts as a defense mechanism for them. That doesn't make it any better. <laughs> they simply cannot see it. Ironically, that is maybe the singular defense that prevents lethal self-harm. While anyone who is, in constant, who is in contact with someone with BPD has an option to leave. Be grateful for that and compassionate because the BPD sufferer 
can't leave, they are trapped. And I don't like that whole comment because to me, that is more of an enabling comment. There is a line where I think compassion and empathy has its limits. And to me, it has its limits when we're going to enable people to continue being a victim, to continue being abusive. I don't think that's helpful. So a lot of people with BPD may read that and hear that comment and say, yes, I I agree with that. He understands. But it's like, is he really helping you with that comment? Or is he kind of giving you the out that, yeah, you're the victim. You can't help your disorder. And that's one of the red flags to me when I know someone isn't ready for a relationship is when they talk like that. When they say things like, I can't help my disorder. I can't help it that I was born with this or developed this over time. And I think to myself, yes, that's how I know you aren't ready for a relationship because you're not taking ownership of your issue. It is not intolerant to tell someone to take ownership and responsibility. In fact, I think it is one of the most helpful things to tell them because it actually wants to see them do better. The first step to change, admitting there's an issue. A lot of BPD people can do that, but then they're not very good at the other sides of it. They're not very good at actually taking the responsibility and the action steps to doing better. And I don't think there's an issue with calling that part out. And I like what Destiny said about being a victim. He said there's a lot of people on social media that act like being the victim is the final destination. And it shouldn't be. Being a victim should only be a step on the road to recovery. And as someone that wants to see BPD people doing better, and someone who has done better in their own life, acting like a victim about it does not help in the long run. It only helps in the extent that you can recognize the issue and admit the problem. But if you're not going to take further action from there, what's the point? And so I want to encourage people that have BBD. Yeah, I get it. I certainly get it. But you got to do better. You got to recognize the issue, take responsibility, go to DBT, and then practice it. Learn how to respond rather than to react. That's the playbook here. And to say that's intolerant or lacks understanding, I just don't buy that. I think my point of view on this will actually help the most amount of people that have BPD. It's the most pragmatic solution there is. And so to circle back to the initial question here, how do you handle a woman that has BPD? I would say, usually you shouldn't. Usually you shouldn't, but if there's a case where they've had BPD, they admitted they have a problem, they take responsibility, they go to DBT, they have a track record of not acting out in an abusive manner, not splitting, and they've learned how to respond rather than react, okay, maybe then, but that is a rare scenario. And again, people can say anything they want about it, But until you see it in action, it doesn't matter. The proof will be in the pudding. So if you see someone that's actually doing better, that they've learned how to do all of those things and not act out, maybe then. But then guess what? They may technically have BPD, but they're not acting out on all the symptoms anymore. That means they're on the path to recovery and healing. But I'm very hesitant to say that part first because it is certainly not the majority of cases. And again, the red flag of someone that is certainly not ready is when they blame their disorder and they say, I can't help my disorder. I'm a victim of my disorder. It's not my fault. That is the opposite of taking responsibility. And I want to empower people that have BPD or any sort of issue for that matter, whether it's depression, anxiety, or whatever, I want to empower them to do better. And to me, part of empowering is being completely honest about it. Telling them, yeah, you got to take responsibility. Admit you have an issue, take responsibility, learn to respond rather than react. To me, that's empowering. 
when the solution is outside of us or we can't help it and we're the victim, I don't think that helps at all. That doesn't help at all. So that's my video here about BPD, how to handle a woman that has BPD. Usually you shouldn't. But in the cases that I mentioned where they've done all of those steps and have a track record of success, okay, maybe that would be different. But let's not act like that's a majority of the time. And here's the other thing, the last thing I'll talk about. If a guy is t saying to me and asking me, how do you deal with a woman who has BPD? That guy is already a guy that is probably struggling with codependency and it's probably not a good situation for him. And, and even in casual relationships, right? Maybe you want to date someone casually and they happen to have BPD. Well, just the fact that that question is being asked means that it's probably not a good candidate for you to have a casual relationship with because there can be a lot of drama that can suck you in. And if you're not ready for it, if you're not based in reality and have a strong sense of radical self-respect, they can pull you under. And you might think you're going to be casual about it, and then it turns into something completely different, and they cycle you through the stages. And so I would say guys have to be really honest with themselves when it comes to relationships with these kinds of women. And for casual relationships, probably not the best thing either. So if you got this far, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I come up with more videos, and comment below what you think about my reasoning here. If you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.